Welcome to the introduction to the Irish language. Welcome to an introduction to the Irish language by Celtic Life and Heritage Foundation. I am Kiran Omani. Today I will be your guide. So today we're going to do a couple of words, phrases, um, interesting things that we'll be able to use in every day in our work. So the first one, of course, is hello and goodbye. So if I'm going to say hello, I'm going to say dear, great which is, God be with you. Now, if I said to you, dear great, you're supposed to say back to me, you have a choice. And this is really interesting because Irish people, uh, they understand quite a lot from the way we converse with each other in terms of how we respond. So if I said, dear great, you could say, dear great, back to me, and I would call that an even. So, dear great, dear great. But if I said, dear great to you, and you said, dear spur great, then I'd say, oh, this person is very friendly. So, dear spur great is like a response that makes you be more engaged with the person. Dear, and then you have got an apostrophe S, dear, Mura. And that's Mura for Mary. So this was God, this is Mary, his mother. And then we're gonna say, dear Smurugut. So when I've said, God be with you, and you say, God and Mary be with you. So that's really friendly. So if I start off by saying, dear Smurugut to you, and you said, dear Gwit to me, then that's kind of back and back a little bit, and you don't wanna to talk to me. I get it. So if I said, dear Smurugut to you, and you said, dear Smurugut, you say, oh, he's friendly, or she's friendly. And then if you said to me, ah, dear Smurugut, and then if you added something like, dear Smurugut, it's Patrick. You added Patrick. You know who Patrick was? He was the saint, the Irish saint. So I said, dear Gwit, dear Smurugut, dear Smurugut is Patrick. So you've got choices. You, and, and depending on how much talking you want to do, or how friendly you want to be with the person, you can decide. So if I start her off and I said, Dear Smurugut is Padraig, and you said, Dear Grit, it's like, I don't want to talk to you, go away. And I could get that, and I would probably go away. But if I said, Dear Smurugut, and you said, Dear Smurugut is Padraig, then I say, Oh, I want to talk to you, and you want to talk to me. So there's a lot going on in that little phrase. So you can practice that, Dear Grit, Dear Smurugut, and Dear Smurugut is Padraig. And then um, if you want to say goodbye, Again, there's a lot of different ways of saying goodbye, but we'll do a simple one today. So, slán lát, or slán agut. And I'm going to put that underneath. Slán is the word for good. And then, slán lát. L-E-A-T. That's to you, goodbye to you. And this one here, slán agut. Goodbye with you. So it depends on who's leaving. If I'm leaving, I'm going to say Slánagut, and you would say Slánlat to me. If you were leaving, I'd say Slánlat, and you'd say Slánagut to me. It depends on the motion, who's doing what motion. If I'm standing here and you're leaving, well then, that's one kind of a goodbye. So Slánlat or Slánagut. Another common word we use is thank you and you're welcome. In Irish we say Gramahagut which is not the same as thank you. Uh, it's actually quite a complex construction, but we'll, we'll walk through it. So, go, rev, ma, a good. Whenever there's a T at the end of the word, it usually indicates you, I'm talking to you. If it was an M, it would be me, and T is usually you. So, something to you, and in this case, ma, Ma is good. May there be good to you, which is thank you. It's pretty complex, but it's, it makes sense to us. So, Gorev is like a phrase that's a prayer. May you have, or may you something. May there be. May there be good to you. So, this is M A I T H, and again, you've got an H on the T, which means that the T becomes an H. I know I hate to say that because it's so confusing, but you know, it works. So you got an M-A and an H sound. The I tells you to make the T-H standard. Well, since it's an H, it's okay. And then a gut, you say everything here. Typically in an Irish word, when you have um, like a gut, you've got no sheen of father anywhere on that. So then you have a choice. Where do you put the stress? First syllable, second syllable, because there's two syllables in this word, a gut. And Typically, it's in the first syllable, but in this case, it could be balanced on the second syllable because we use it so much. 
Guru Mahabhat, and it runs together nicely. If I say to you, Guru Mahabhat, you say back to me, Safaja wrote. And I put the Shina Fada in. T A Fada, F A Fada, I L T E. That's how we spell. So, first of all, the verb to be, ta, is Faja means welcome, and then watch what happens here. There's a, a T at the end, so that means it's to you. Ta Faja road. There is welcome to you. Now, road means really in front of you, so I'm putting welcome in front of you, which is a very nice way of saying it. Guru Mahabhat, thank you. Ta Faja road. I'm putting this welcome in front of you. So ta let's take a look. In that first one up here, there is no Sheena Fada, and there is one um, Shevu, which is an H. So the Sheena Fada is on the A here, so the A becomes Ta, very like an A-W sound. Ta, and again, it's the same sound here, Falja. The I is not pronounced at all, but it tells you to make the L and the T slender. So you don't get a Falta, you get a Falja, which is what happens here. The I tells you how to put the L and T and of course, at the end, you have to balance it, coil a coil, lahan a lahan, the slender follows slender. And then over here, the M has an H on it, so it becomes, you know, an H. We all know that, right? It's a broad M with an H on it, so it's R-O-H-A-T, road. Very simple, I understand. Thal Fonte Road. So, one last time, Gramahagut. Easy words in the language are yes, no, and um, it is, it isn't. Simple words, but actually they're quite com complex. Even in the English language they're complex, but for Irish we'll take them one word at a time. The first one we'll look at is yes, which is sha. I'm going to focus on this for one second because you could say, why is that not C? I mean, it looks like C, but I'm going to say it's pronounced sha like that. And, and that will take us to a place for understanding S. Because remember, the rule is again that you can have a broad consonant, A, O, or U. Let's put them over here. Or a slender consonant, I, or E. And if I've got an S with a broad consonant, it's going to be, I'm going to put an S-A here, that'll be an S sound, sa. If I have an S with a slender consonant, it's going to be an S-H sound, sh. And that's what happens here, because I have an E, I'm not saying the E, it's not C, the, the word is, I'm looking for is a, so the E tells me what to do with the S. Make the S an S-H and say, S H R. So the E just tells you what to make the S sound like. It's a slender sounding S. So you've got S for broad and SH for slender. So then for the word yes, we get SHA. And if we're taking the opposite of that, um, we're going to say no. And the opposite of that will be it's negative. The negative for anything in Irish is knee. And of course, you're going to say, how can you get an I, E sound out of an I with a Sheena Fada? Well, that's exactly what happens here. The I is A, and the I Fada is E. So this is like an A sound, I, H, and that's a double E sound, E. E becomes E. And so in this case, then, we've got a knee. I'm going to just make some space here. Knee. And then, remember the part up here? It's the E-A part. It's knee-a. Well, guess what? You, in Irish, you can't have a consonant, sorry, a vowel crashing up against another vowel because it forces you to stop. Knee-a. There's a glottal stop here. It makes it hard to say. So, Irish people, having spoken this language for thousands of years, have made it. They added the H. Knee-a. Sha, ni ha. It's simple. Sha, yes, ni ha. No.